to my channel. I'm so happy you're here today. We are making our jam bars. This recipe is such a favorite as spring is starting to show. Um, we're starting to get out of winter slowly, but this is a favorite for Easter, for springtime. Really, I make this lots of times throughout the year, and I use whatever jam I have on hand, and we're going to get into it. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that's in our private membership. If you're looking to help support what I do here on the channel, you've been enjoying the recipes, you want extra recipes, um, I have a private membership where I put out five recipes every month, plus give leave up a bunch of other recipes. There's always around 22 to 25 recipes total in there for you guys to access. Plus we do a live cooking class each month and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but it's a great way for you to help support what I do. So again, if you've loved our recipes, if you've been finding yourself coming back here, if you want to help support us, joining the membership is such a fantastic way. And I just love that community so much. It's really the recipes I'm working on currently. And then they take a couple months to come out here on the channel. So if you're uh, a lover of them and you want access to them early and want to help support what I do, it's right below for you. We're going to jump into today's recipe. I love this recipe because it's easy and also because it looks really, really gourmet. You can change up the flavoring. Like I said, today we're doing raspberry. We do apricot, whatever flavors I have on hand. I have a video on how to make jam. I will link up above. But really, I just freeze a bunch and then you can thaw it and have it ready to go for this recipe. So... This also is going to be on our Easter menu, and I just love it. It's just, you'll see. It's really, really simple. You might have all the ingredients already on hand, which I love. So if you head over down below or to our website, you can print out the free printable PDF or the Microsoft document if you use like a recipe app and you need to copy and paste it. I have it all there for you on our website, totally free and available um, with grams, so that should be really helpful. So to get started, I like to use a 9 inch square silicone pan. You can play around with this with different pans that you might have. If you're not using silicone, you may want to line it with parchment paper as a heads up so it doesn't stick. Um, and it just will vary on the thickness of the kind of the crust part of this mixture. Um, I like this because this gives a nice kind of even layer and you get a lot out if you use a 9 inch square pan. This is also in our Amazon shop if you're interested in the exact one I have, which is linked below as well on our website. Um, lots of places to find it. So we're gonna get started. I have one and a half cup of oat flour. So you can get you know, gluten-free oat flour, make it yourself, gluten-free oats, which is really nice to make this recipe totally gluten-free. I have one and a half cup of rolled oats. So it's one to one, really easy to remember. We're gonna do all the dry ingredients first. Just give that a little toss. I have one teaspoon of baking powder. You can add that in. Three fourths cups of date sugar. Now you don't wanna use date paste for this because that's a wet ingredient and that will throw off the mixture. Um, we are using date sugar, which is granulated dates. So three fourths cups. You could start off a little bit slower. I've done half a cup to up to three fourths cups. This really depends on how sweet you like your bars. I think that this is a nice balance of sweetness. It's not like sickening sweet and it's not um, and there's a little bit of sweetness. So this part you can kind of play around with with your taste buds. Start at three fourths of a cup and kind of see but don't use date paste. That would not work for this one. It needs to be granulated date sugar. All right, everything is tossed in. The jam we're going to totally leave out until the one whole layer, so that's not really part of this ingredients. But now we're going to add in the wet. So I have um, three-fourths cups of applesauce unsweetened. This is going to go in. See that and the date sugar helps sweeten it, and then we're adding jam on top. So um, I think it's I think it's the perfect amount of sweetness. I also have one fourth of a cup of tahini. Now this is going to add it to be creamy and delicious. Um, so I really like using tahini in a couple different surprising ways and this is one of them. You have a jar of tahini in your fridge and you're not sure what to do with it. A little bit goes in this recipe. And then I just have a, a teaspoon of vanilla extract or vanilla powder. 
All right, that's it for the base of this recipe. It is so easy. And we're just gonna take a moment and just mix in everything. This, this does take just a couple minutes, get a little arm workout. <laughs> um, but you really want all of the flour from the oat flour and the rolled oats to really be, you know, coated. You don't want them dried powdered. So the next part after we've mixed this in for like a minute or so, um, you can you can do two different things. You can put the entire amount in a pan and press it down and then make your jam part just the top layer. That looks really beautiful. I most times will take out just a little bit of this mixture, maybe like one fourth of it, put it aside and then crumble it on top of the jam layer and then that looks really nice too. So that's really a personal preference. Um, I'm gonna crumble it for today. Most times I do that. But if you're not a fan of the crumble toppings, you can just use the jam as your final top layer. And then you can cut these into bars or squares or whatever shape you want. Um, it really is just an awesome recipe. And you'll see that the jam or jelly really does get nice and like solidified in there. And um, it just becomes the perfect sweet treat or brunch treat. If you want to make this, I usually serve this with a cup of tea, which is really nice. All right, I'm gonna mix this and I'll see you guys in a second. It just takes a moment to really, really incorporate. After everything is well incorporated, I wanna just give you a heads up. This is a little bit of a sticky recipe. It's okay, because you can wash your hands. But with clean hands, I just, again, take about three fourths of this mixture because I'm gonna save a little bit of it to crumble on top. Um, that's optional. Again, you can put the whole thing in here, but I just generally take the whole thing, put it in the middle, and then I evenly use my hands to spread it out. Uh, this just takes a couple moments of patience, and I find that using your hands is the best method to kind of getting it to spread out evenly, but it is supposed to be a little bit of a wet consistency. It all works out when you bake it, but um, I do use my the pads in my hands as well. And that just kind of helps push it evenly throughout each corner. And yeah, that's the first layer. I mean, this is the hardest part. <laughs> Not hard at all. And think about how many variations of flavors you can do. We, again, have a video for plum jam and raspberry jam, but you could use strawberry, blackberry, mixed berries. Um, remember this for the fall for apple butter bars. Uh, you can also do, you know, so many different ideas. This is just a great start of a recipe for you guys. So um, I really, really think you guys are going to love this. And it holds up really well for a bar, too. It's not super crumbly. And, uh, yeah, we just love it. It's a great thank you gift if you... I always like giving people food as a gift. Um, this one is really a great hit because everyone loves jam bars. Now that everything is spread out as your bottom layer, you can put your oven to 350 degrees. This is gonna take a half an hour to bake. Um, doesn't take long, but you also have to let it cool completely before you cut them into bars, and you just wanna let it sit and remove it from the oven. So that's a little keynote. So I have our jam here. Again, you can use any jam that you like, and you just wanna evenly kind of spread it out as best as possible. So same with just like we did the bottom layer, we're going to do it with the jam layer. And then you can add that extra topping if you left some on the side. It's totally optional. You can skip that step if you want the jam layer to be on top. After the jam layer is on top, again, you could bake this at this point, but I do like to put a little bit of crumble. And so I find that... You know, you can put large chunks and smaller chunks with variations, but I find that the smaller chunks um, kind of go better when you go to cut them. So I just kind of sprinkle, brick to use my hands and kind of just take apart and just kind of sprinkle on like a top layer and spread them out so that they'll crisp up. But again, it's totally whatever you'd like to do at home. Um, I've done it both ways. The key again is to cook it for 30 minutes and then to pull it out of the oven, but let it sit and let the pan cool completely before you cut them into bars or remove it. And that'll just let the jam really set up. But this recipe is 
very easy. It looks very homemade and like gourmet and doesn't take long at all to put together. I will see you guys when they are all done, but they are gonna pop into the oven now. Such a favorite. Now that the bars have cooled, you can go ahead and cut them into bars or squares, whatever you'd like to do, but it smells so good. You'll see that the jam really sets up well. So I just go in with a butter knife and just make my bar shapes. And really how big or small you want to make these will be however many it serves, but you can get quite a lot out of this. And there you have it. They hold up well, they freeze great. I think this is the perfect snack or brunch item with a cup of tea. Perfect to have company over and to make for Easter coming up. I hope you guys enjoy this. So make sure you subscribe, check out the membership down below. Remember we are funded by viewers like you and I really appreciate everyone that becomes a member so much to help me keep going with uh, this amazing project of making recipes and building our website and making plant-based accessible for everyone. So I will see you guys real soon in the next one. I hope you guys make this. Leave us a comment if you do, and I know it'll be a family hit. I'll see you guys later. Take a little bite. The perfect amount of sweetness. I hope you guys give it a try.